Welcome to this month's Flying Razorback Report. I'm Senior Airman Matthew Matlock. On this edition, we learn about the Airman of the Year program, take a look at mentorship opportunities, and more. But first, we would like to congratulate Chief Allender of the 123rd Intelligence Squadron for his dedicated service to the wing. Allender joined the Air National Guard in 1984 as an imagery interpreter specialist and served as a subject matter expert at the 123rd in Little Rock, Arkansas for more than 30 years. Four years after transitioning to the 188th ISRG, he is now retiring as superintendent. Colonel Rowlett, director of the Intelligence Joint Force Headquarters, said, I don't know anyone who has done more for the 123rd than Chief Tommy Allender. For the full story and photos from the event, head over to the base webpage and click on News. Now, mentorship is about assisting personal and professional development of an individual's success. Staff Sergeant Morgana Schluterman has more. I'm Staff Sergeant Morgana Schluterman. I'm the president of the Wing Mentorship Council. The Wing Mentorship Council was created to provide mentorship for low enlisted by the top three enlisted and by company grade officers. Our goal is to bring back the culture of mentorship. It's important because a lot of people need to know how to guide their careers to be successful. Building relationships is the foundation of mentoring. You know, and then, what's the impact? There are hundreds of people willing to mentor, and there are hundreds of people needing to be mentored and are very hungry for mentorship. Just know that, that, that there is a service out there available. So I would encourage everybody to at least stop by our speed mentoring sessions to, to see what it's like and we will create an entire culture throughout the wing. And now a special holiday message from Chaplain Tom Smith. Christmas. When you hear that uh, word what comes to mind? Well for many people uh, it uh, is a time of giving gifts and receiving gifts, putting up trees and lights and music in the stores and all those kinds of things. For other people it doesn't really mean all that much. But the thing I love in being a Christian uh, chaplain is what it stands for uh, in my belief, is that there's a God in heaven that loves us so much that he gave us the greatest gift possible. And even if you don't believe that way, I want you to understand that God really loves you and that he loves it when we are giving to each other. So I hope that this uh, time of the year, the holidays, if you call it that, or Christmas, that you'll use it as an opportunity to give to someone maybe that you don't even know, to give a gift and to change a life. So, as I would say, Merry Christmas. God bless you. Recently, some Airmen of the Year were recognized on stage during a Martina McBride concert in Fort Smith. McBride offered some encouraging words and thanked these extraordinary Airmen for their service. The Outstanding Airmen of the Year program showcases exceptional Airmen and their achievements throughout the year. The program promotes professional development, innovation, and mission success by cultivating ready, responsive, and highly skilled Airmen. Make sure you give your outstanding airmen credit and nominate them this quarter. And that brings us to this month's Spotlight. My name is Airman Dylan Clements. Uh, I work in personnel in headquarters. Uh, I was born in uh, Lake and Heath, England on the Air Force Base, come from a military family, and moved to Arkansas when I was about five years old, and I love it here. I'm learning to be in charge of promotions and awards and decorations. I also do just basic customer service as far as ID cards and life insurance. I get to meet a lot of people from it. I get to learn a lot and kind of learn the backbone of the Air Force. I really just like the military. It's really good on the resume, it looks really great. And I mean, I'm serving my country too, which you really can't beat. Uh, I enjoy music, I enjoy just being active, working out, running. Really, I really like playing guitar and any other instrument you could possibly think of. I haven't been out here too long. I've only been enlisted for about two years, so. I mean, really student flight, I guess, was my favorite. I mean, I got to learn a lot before I went to basic, and it was a good learning opportunity for me. It really gives you a step ahead when you, when you get there. Yeah, I'm a very proud member of the 188th Wing. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> hey there, everyone. I'm Tech Sergeant Robbie Yarp with your look around the Air Force. Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General David Goldfein, paid a visit to McIntyre Joint National Guard Base, South Carolina last week, along with South Carolina's congressional delegation to discuss the future basing of F-35s. We could not do the mission of the United States Air Force in support of our nation's objectives. We could not do the mission were it not for the Air National Guard. 
And I will also tell you, we could not perform the mission at the level that we do were it not, be, were it not for the professionalism of this very unit. The leadership here is just fantastic. Uh, I am 100% confident in the combat capability and the lethality of this unit, and it's an honor to be back. This is the first time a sitting Air Force Chief of Staff has visited McIntyre. A KC-135 Stratotanker and crew from RAF Mildenhall performed joint training over Athens, Greece last week with the Hellenic Air Force. The training focus was air-to-air -air refueling in order to support NATO interoperability requirements. 22 Hellenic Air Force F-16s participated in the training, with many earning their air refueling qualification. This is the first time the 100th Air Refueling Wing has operated in Athens, Greece. Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, Khalid Wright, gave updates on issues affecting the enlisted force during the 2017 Airlift Tanker Association Symposium in Orlando, Florida. The three-day symposium focused on the rapid global mobility enterprise and the airmen who execute the mission. Chief Wright provided updates on initiatives nearing completion, such as adjustments to the awards program, timing, and requirements. He said that the Air Force is really close to reducing the number of written lines for the annual awards program from 27 to 16. For more on today's top stories, check out AF.mil. And that's your look around the Air Force. That's it for this month's Flying Razorback Report. Head over to the Wings Facebook page, like, comment, and share. I'm Senior Airman Matthew Matlock. See you next time.